In this lesson, I'm going to give an overview of family systems theory and apply it to families with adolescents. So what do we mean when we talk about the family as a system? The basis of family systems theory is that there are three forms as which the family exists and functions. First, every family member is independent, self-aware, and self-directed. Some cultures may not value independence, so it may help to think of this point as a continuum. There are degrees of independence, and certainly every individual has some degree of being self-directed, even if it's just in thought and not in action. Second, the family has a unique way of functioning as a whole that requires the communication of meanings and social position. And third, the family must operate within the larger social system. These second and third points apply really well across the board. All families need to create a shared meaning, and here family may include extended family, elders, the Hmong clan, however family is defined in a given culture. Having to operate within the larger social system has particularly powerful implications for immigrant and refugee families, and we'll come back to this in a minute. So what does this mean for families during adolescence? The first two premises of family systems theory that were just introduced are particularly important here. So the emergence of adolescence is one stage in the life cycle that's likely to test the adaptability of the family system. So adolescents are changing quickly and frequently, making it more difficult for the family system to adapt. Increasing participation with the environment outside the family system allows adolescents to introduce new experiences and stressors to the family. Adolescents experiment with different behaviors, which may threaten the stability of the family system. Families are organized to maintain relatively uniform relationships, and a teenager is really challenging the family system by bringing in new styles, new language, mannerisms, values, and families must adapt to these changes in order to preserve the continuity of their system. There's also a strong relationship between adolescent behavior and the family system's capability. So adolescent behavior is both a reaction and a stimulus in the family system. So every family member is an active participant in the system so that family influences youth behaviors, but youth behaviors also impact the family. This quote is from the mother of two teenage boys. She has one in middle school, one in high school. She's married, living in a rural area, and describes herself as white. And she shares her perspective on what it means to be part of a family system. So she says, what are your family values? You know, are we accountable to each other, even though we've got adults working with adolescents? In our household, there is some degree of accountability that goes both ways, and that's for everyone's security. Now this diagram of the ecological model demonstrates the third point of family systems theory. The family must exist within the larger social system. Now, an ecological framework builds on the interaction between the individual and his or her environment, and more specifically, and for the purpose of this discussion, the relationship between an adolescent and his or her environment. Yuri Bronfenbrenner differentiated between micro, meso, exo, and macro system influences on a young person's life. So you can see here the child is at the center of the diagram. Microsystems are situations in which the child has face-to-face -face contact with influential others, so peers, family. Mesosystems are the relationships between these microsystems, so for example, the relationship between a parent and his or her workplace. The exosystem are those influences on a teen that are not necessarily direct, but still have an influence, so for example, friends of the family whether a teen lives in an urban, suburban, or rural area, and the school that he or she attends. The macro system rep represents the broader community and culture within which a young person is growing and developing. And finally, the chrono system, which you can see here on the left side of um, the figure, represents change over time. So an ecological framework is not static, but rather a product of the individual, the family, and the culture and historical time in which they're living and growing. You'll also notice that there are bi-directional arrows that cut across each of these systems. That recognizes that these system levels of influences do not act independently of one another. Consider the following questions. How does the ecological model apply to the different families that you work with? What other institutions or groups would you add to the ecological model for the families you work with? How would you consider culture, economics, social class, race, ethnicity, and religion 
in family systems theory.